Hi everybody and welcome to today's class. We're going to be going through concentration time graphs. Um, this is related to equilibrium and um, yeah, so basically first of all we need to know, okay, what is a concentration time graph? And basically what it is, is um, it's showing you the differences of concentration and how it changes with time. Okay, now these are very useful for things that are um, changing equilibrium. So things that are constantly at equilibrium are really boring, okay? You'll find that if you have a reaction and what will happen at equilibrium is that the concentrations will not change. If you have three reactants or three product, sorry, three different molecules in your equation, you'll find that their concentration at equilibrium will not change because that is the definition of equilibrium. Equilibrium is when the forward reaction matches exactly the backward reaction and so you expect no change of concentrations, okay? Because the only way a concentration can be changed is if you start changing, you know, making the forward one more powerful, making the backward one less powerful and so forth. So in this case, as you can see, they're all stable, all right? It's it's only until you start changing things to your system will concentration time graphs get more interesting. So you might find that you know you've got a rise or a fall or some kind of change depending on what you've done to your system. So to understand before before what we were doing is we were just looking at Lee Chatelier's principle and we were like trying to figure out um, what is happening to the um, equation and how it's modifying itself to accomplish equilibrium back again. So this time what we're doing <coughs> is we're making a more visual case of this, okay? So for instance, if you have a, some sort of reaction, and I'll just get, get a reaction here from my trustworthy chemistry book. Okay, so if I just find a reaction uh, for HCl, I have to pick the longest one. Four uh, HCl plus oxygen gives us um, two chlorides uh, plus two waters. Okay. So, in this case, let's have a look at what will happen to the system if we do a few changes. Um, and let's have a look at what would happen eventually to the concentration time graph. So, um, the first thing is, let's just say that um, these are in aqueous, this is a gas, this is um, gas and liquid. Now, let's have a look at what would happen if we decided to um, increase pressure. So we've already spoken about an increase of pressure and basically we saw, I don't know if you remember a few lessons ago, we saw that an increase of, temper of pressure actually reduces, actually is only applicable to gases. Okay, so it's actually only these two that are going to be affected by that increase of pressure. Um, this one here and this one there because they're the only gases in the system. And so what you'll find is that an increase of pressure causes all of these um, volume, like the volume of the gas is squeezed together and so the particles get closer together, all right? So since the particles get closer together, the gaseous particles get closer together, we want them to be back um, further apart, okay, like they were initially. So what the reaction does is it chooses the direction that produces less particles. So you're kind of spreading out the distance between them if you're producing less particles. So compare two gaseous particles to only one gaseous particle means that you're going backwards that way, okay? Um, you don't look at the liquid, you do not look at the aqueous because they're not going to be affected by pressure, okay? So an increase in pressure means that this um, equilibrium system will go backwards. And so basically um, all we're going to really look at um, Okay, if we have concentration here, concentration, and if we have time here, what we're going to do is we're completely going to ignore water right now because water, you can't get a concentration of water, okay? Because to have a concentration, 
you need to immerse some substance into your whole medium okay and water is treated like a medium so water can't really be dissolved into water it's more ions in water then you have a concentration if you have like you know carbon monoxide in air uh, then you have a concentration because air is the medium okay so water itself does not have a concentration so it will not be included in your concentration time graph okay so let's have a look let's just put them anywhere um, this will have a concentration this will have a concentration and this will have a concentration also because um, yeah because it's aqueous so the amount of HCl molecules in your aqueous substance gives it a concentration so let's just draw them out anywhere at the moment I'm just going to draw out the um, the the chlorine gas at the top. So let's just see L2. All right, the um, oxygen gas can go right here. Oxygen and the HCl can go here. So I always treat this initially at equilibrium, and then I show what changes have occurred. Okay. So as you can see, because we decrease the volume, basically what we what we did is we squeezed everything closer together so Cl2 actually jumped up because we squeezed them together so the concentration initially became really concentrated in that spot so this jumped up and this one really didn't get affected because it didn't get affected by your initial squeezing of pressure together okay this hasn't been affected okay so it's only these two that actually rise because they're both gases and yeah gases get affected by pressure okay so let us look now what happens all right now that was your very initial change so initial like if i draw a dotted line initial so you always have to like make sure that you write in the initial change of what has happened and after that, now just just a little technical thing. Um, if I get my thingy, okay. Um, as you can see, the the coefficients in front will tell you appro approximately how much you rise by. So as you can see, chloride should actually increase double the amount of oxygen. So oxygen shouldn't really be as high as chloride. So I'm just gonna like, yeah, beautiful. All right, now that I've got it all perfect, um, let's have a look. It goes backwards. The entire equation after the initial change has been accomplished. Lee Chatelier has kicked in and it's gone backwards. So it means that you generate more of this and this. And you use up more of this and this. This is not even on the concentration time graph. Um, but yeah, that, we, we already discussed why it isn't. Okay, so basically you're going to have oxygen increasing and HCl increasing. So HCl is actually going to gradually increase. It's actually going to get bigger and bigger. And it's going to get bigger and bigger by a factor of four because there's a four in front. But I just don't have enough room here. And it's going to plateau eventually after a given time. It's going to do something like that, okay? Now oxygen, because it's on this side, okay, and you're going towards that side, you're going to generate more oxygen. So after your initial change, oxygen still goes up. And it goes up pretty gradually, like the HCl. Um, that's meant to go up. That's not meant to be a horizontal line. Okay, so... Um, <clears throat> Alright, you'll find that, yeah, it just, it's just um, like something like this. Okay, so it's gone up a tiny bit by a factor of 1 times by 1. This has gone up by a factor of 4. Alright? And um, chloride is actually getting used up to go forward, to go backwards, sorry. So chloride is going to actually, from this initial change, it's going to start dropping off. Whoops, it's not going to rise, it's just going to, I have trouble with straight lines. Okay, so this is by a factor of two. It drops by a factor of two. It never comes back down to its same original level. Okay, as you can see, it's higher. Um, yeah. So that's just something with these concentration time graphs that you have to be aware of. It doesn't come back to the initial value that it was at. Okay, so that is what we mean by concentration time graphs. And you have to get better and better at being able to understand um, when looking at even one, what the changes of the system may have been. Um, we will go through many other problems involving concentration time graphs. But that's it for now. I hope you learned something today. And if you have any questions, feel free to post them. Um,